Okay, it is Thursday, March 17, 2022. It's 9 a.m. And I'll officially call to order the meeting of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission Transportation Policy Workshop. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Bertrand. Present. Commissioner Brown. Commissioner Johnson. Oops, sorry about that. Commissioner Dillis. Here. Commissioner Alternate Hurst. Here. Commissioner Caput. Commission, uh, Commissioner Alternate Shipfriend. Here. Commissioner Friend. Commissioner Koenig. Here. Commissioner McPherson. Commissioner Peterson. Present. Commission Alternate Pegler. Here. Commissioner Rotkin. Here. And Commissioner Brown. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. We'll proceed to item two, oral communications. Any member of the public may address the commission on any item within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not already on the agenda. The commission will listen to all communications, but in compliance with state law, it may not take action on items that are not on the agenda. Speakers are requested to state their name clearly so that it can be accurately recorded in the minutes of the meeting, and each speaker will have two minutes. So we'll, uh, if you'd like to make a comment, please raise your hand and we'll call, I'll call on you in the order that hands were raised. Our first speaker will be Mr. Barry Scott. Uh, good morning, uh, commissioners, and thank you for holding uh, holding this meeting today. Uh, I just wanted to thank the the commission for years and years of hard work, and you know, the transportation policy is a is a big idea and an important topic policy, and I'm uh, I'm reminded of a letter that brings me joy <laughs> that was from Director Preston to uh, the California Transportation Commission in uh, dated March 8, 2019. And I think it speaks to the best and highest transportation policy that this county is, has ever expressed. Uh, and I'll read a couple short passages from it. Uh, while there have been proposals by some community members and groups to rail bank or remove the railroad tracks, in January 2019, after extensive analysis and public input conducted through the Unified Corridor Study, the RTC board unanimously affirmed its commitment to leave the railroad infrastructure in place, maintain freight rail service, and institute high-capacity public transit service. You know, we've since then had the transit corridor alternatives analysis that showed us that electric light rail is the best transit use. And along with the trail, this is the right thing to do. So I'm grateful for the work that the commission is authorizing to be done on the railroad to keep it in, uh, in good order. And another short passage from the same letter, the RTC purchased the rail line to increase mobility options for our community visitors and businesses. The rail corridor provides an alternative to congested road, roadways and connects to major towns and cities. Connects to rail lines serving the rest of the state, supports more compact development and more predictable travel times, and can help us meet state greenhouse gas reduction targets. So for all of that and more, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Next up, Brian, Trail Now. Hi, thanks. This is Brian from Trail Now. We have thousands of supporters across the county. Um, you know, I remember a decade ago, I was meeting with former supervisor Ellen Perry, and she was on the this board during the procurement of the Santa Cruz Coastal Corridor. I remember her statements well. She said, you know, there's never going to be a train. It doesn't make sense. She said that. And she said, I wanted to acquire the corridor to protect this public access and she did that is very key i remember her saying which was shocking to me that train people and this is the first time i ever heard this term would stop the use of the corridor and i'm shocked that over over a decade now the corridor has sat unused um, and we've spent millions on studies and and maintaining that corridor Ellen Prairie said that they would stop it, and she was right, unfortunately. Now we know rail banking, based off of the study report from RTC Director Guy Preston, is 
legal process. It's for preserving this corridor. It allows us to pull the rails and build the trail. And this isn't new to us. It's actually 24,000 miles across America. It's done. So this isn't new information. So we as a community truly need this rail banking to occur. And we need to start using this property. We need to open it up for real mobility. Letting it sit there with the old railroad tracks is not leadership. We need this organization to move forward with rail banking and opening the corridor as soon as possible. It is a major issue for our community. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. Next speaker will be Ms. Judy Gittleson. Hi, thank you, commissioners. I wanna say counter to the previous caller that the this is an environmental crisis era and to eliminate any possibility of rail, which Greenway wants to do is a crime. It's criminal. I wanna keep our environment as, as lovely as it is. Do not allow any highway widening. Please be responsible to the bills that have gone before you and repair the tracks. That is your duty as public servants to do what you have already authorized and, and allowed yourself to do. This is an opportunity to make your grandchildren proud and to keep an area pristine. Do not allow for private interest to take away public transportation. We in Watsonville, I'm a Watsonville citizen and I teach people with special needs. They are very dependent on public transportation and to keep the possibility of rail in the future is what you have already signed to do. And this measure is, is uh, um, moving, reversing the public voice already and it is um, an irresponsible action to uh, support this. So I wholly support the non-passage, however, you're voting no on Measure D, that Greenway is doing a disservice to the community and you as commissioners have an obligation to follow through with what you have already uh, stated you would do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gittleson. Seeing no other hands raised in the public, we'll proceed to item three, additions or deletions to consent or regular agendas. Executive Director Preston, are there any additions or deletions? No, Chair Koenig, there are no additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda. Thank you. Then uh, we'll, we'll proceed to the consent agenda. Would any member of the commission like to uh, make a comment or add, uh, have a question on the consent agenda? We'll, we'll all wait for a public comment, but I'll pre prepare to move the consent agenda. All right, thank you. Um, I'll take it out to the public. Are there any members of the public that would like to comment on the consent agenda? I see a hand raised by Joshua Macha. Go ahead, Joshua. Joshua. Uh, sorry, I was muted. Um, I didn't read my, raise my hand for the public comment, but if I may, I would like to make a comment. Um, I'm gonna have to ask you to reserve that for the next public meeting that we, the commission has. We have moved uh, beyond public comment for the, the general agenda at this time. So just for the consent agenda. All right, um, seeing no other hands from the public to speak to the consent agenda. Um, is there a, I'll bring it back to the commission. Is there a motion? I'll move we can approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Commissioner Rotkin, second by Commissioner Schifrin. Any further discussion? Mm. Seeing none, clerk, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Bertrand? I approve. Commissioner Brown? Aye. Commission Alternate Dillis? Aye. Commission Alternate Hurst? Aye. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Aye. Commissioner Koenig? Aye. Commissioner McPherson? Aye. Commissioner Peterson? Aye. Commission Alternate Pegler? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Rockin? Aye. That's unanimous. Thank you. Um, 
that. Uh, so we'll now move to item six on our regular agenda, which is a review of items to be discussed in closed session. Uh, Council or uh, Executive Director Preston, will you be? Yeah, I'll be introducing this item. We will be having a closed session today. Um, with, um, uh, our attorney, Steve Mattis, will be joining us for a conference on anticipated litigation pursuant to government code 54956.9B2, significant exposure to litigation, one case, and we do not expect um, a reportable uh, action. All right, thank you. And is there any member of the public that would like to speak to items on our closed session agenda? I see a hand raised from Mr. Brian Peoples. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, this is Brian from Trail Now. Um, don't actually know what the closed session is, but I do want to make some comments about the lawsuits that um, continue against the RTC. Um, you know, um, the RTC staff is doing a phenomenal job on deciding on improving our transportation commission uh, corridors. Um, they're moving forward with widening Highway 1 and having plans for bus on shoulder and hopefully longer term RHOV lanes and uh, toll roads. And that really aligns to where California is going and, and the technology is going with transportation. Um, the organizations that are suing the RTC Campaign for Sensible Transportation and Sierra Club, both, if you recall, were the organizations that were against Measure D in 2016. Measure D was phenomenal for our community. We were a big supporter of it. And if we didn't have Measure D funding, where I think we're getting $26 million a year now, um, and we're able to get other funding, that was a huge. And if you recall, those organizations did not want to move our community forward. And it feels like these organizations are doing the same thing. They're not helping our community move forward. They actually have been opposing opening the coastal corridor as well, which is really unusual. You know, why are they preventing opening up coastal corridor for, for our community to use for active transportation. So um, hopefully the, this uh, lawsuit is uh, shot down. I believe it's in May, it's a court case. Um, and really we support you, RTC. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. The commission will now go into closed session. Uh, there is no reportable accent action. Um, so for those of you who uh, want to continue to be engaged with the RTC process, you can join us at our next regular meeting, Thursday, April 7th at 9 a.m. Uh, Commissioner, you should have... Let me just say, Manna, so people know that there's a link that we got this morning from uh, community television to the closed session. It's, it's in your email. Right. All right. Thank you. And I uh, will now go into closed session. <laughs> 